I don't give a crap. A few weeks ago, my friend John Patton published a video where they were out testing a revolver and they were attacked by a rabid mob of Cheeto fingers for flipping a revolver closed one time. And the contention being that doing this can bend the crane. I've also heard that it can bend the ejector rod and still I've been told that it can damage the cylinder. Well, it can't be all three. All of those cannot be simultaneously true. And it is my opinion that none of them are true. And that this is some wives tale that was made up by FUDs that like to make a fetish out of polishing the revolvers meticulously in their spare time and treat them like they're made out of Play-Doh. If it is true, however, then my question is, why on earth do we continue to make them and market them as life-saving equipment? I have a mind to test this in a big way, and if that's something that you guys would like to see, then sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know that I'm tracking properly. I am somewhat waiting for John to finish his testing. He said he was gonna go out and do some related to this topic, and if he goes out and breaks it, then there's no reason for me to build a big rig to do the testing uh, at volume. Uh, but in the meantime, while we wait, perhaps I will cut an episode of the podcast over at the podcast channel to kind of sate your hunger on this topic. Uh, shameless plug for that, uh, link in the description box down below, of course. Yeah, why is it so cold out here? The SAR-38 is a six-shot, single-double-action, four-inch revolver chambered in 357 Magnum. It is of the variety that the cylinder cranes out and uses an ejector rod to expend the spent casings. The release is a heavily textured forward press glide that is very popular these days, and the cylinder rotates counterclockwise like a smith. The grips are all rubber construction, and the sights come with an adjustable rear sight for those of you who are hitting low and left. These come with a traditional unshrouded spur that is aggressively textured for grip so that you don't lose it. Just kidding, it does come with the modern convenience of a transfer bar to prevent accidental discharge. I also found out at shot that these come in stainless. This one is obviously black. Sadness. So testing, one of the things that is not advised when you shoot a revolver is to use the thumbs forward approach. Uh, one, it rests on the cylinder and can obstruct it when you uh, go to double action, but also you'll notice that my thumb rides just forward of the cylinder there and you can burn yourself pretty good uh, because there's a cylinder gap here. There's a space between the cylinder and the forcing cone and uh, gases can escape through there. I'm speaking to you now as past tense, Curtis. This gun is new. Currently, I can barely fit two three thousandths shims between the forcing cone and the cylinder. That's on the starboard side. On the port side, I can only get one. We're also gonna look at the soot pattern on the frame relative to the muzzle. The correct way to eject shells is to invert the weapon so the casings fall out when the ejector rod is actuated. However, that's an ideal perspective, and you may not always be able to get into that ideal position. These are the first and second cylinders of ammo, and currently we don't see any brass hang up. This is a single double action firearm, which means that if we pull on the trigger, it rotates the cylinder and retracts the hammer until we reach the critical point, and then it sends the round when everything's lined up. We also have the ability to put it into single action, which rotates the cylinder and cocks the hammer and locks it into place with the actuation on this spur here. We expect the trigger pull because we're doing all that stuff to be pretty high on double action, very light on single action, which is indeed it is. However, this double action is really not all that bad at all compared to other sing single double action firearms that I've fired. However, 
The amount of effort required to put it on single action I find to be incongruent with what I experience when doing double action. So I'm interested to see if that softens up after a whole bunch of ammunition. Present tense Curtis reporting in, and as expected, we do see a little bit more discoloration on the starboard side than on the port side due to the cylinder gap. I would call it about even on the sooting between the cylinder gap and the muzzle, and that cylinder gap tolerance hasn't changed maintaining the same two and one. I also didn't see many brass hangups during testing. These are the last two cylinders of ejects. I was using predominantly cowboy action ammo, which is usually more on the dirty side, but this stuff is manufactured by Fioki, so it wouldn't surprise me if they carried their same MO into those loads as well. And I'm pleased to report that it is much easier to put it into single action mode than when we started. Don't forget that you can leverage our affiliates page where you can obtain great deals on products that I stand behind, like PowerTac flashlights, and in doing so, you support the channel indirectly through commissions on products that you would otherwise have purchased anyway. So why might you go with a revolver over a semi-automatic handgun? Well, usually when you talk about a revolver over a semi-automatic handgun, you end up with a power upgrade relative. Now that's really easy to shut this thing down in a physical scuffle if we're talking about using it defensively. All that it takes to disable this firearm is that. A revolver like this is not bound by those sorts of limitations and is not reliant on an unoccluded bore for function. So let's go ahead and finish this thing out with my critiques. And fair warning, you're probably going to find all of these pretty nitpicky because I don't have a whole lot of bad stuff to say about this revolver. I found it to be an exceptionally accurate handgun. I was able to hit the big steel out at 200 yards freehand with this thing. The sights. The rear sight is immaculate. It's well serrated. It's got adjustments for windage and elevation, but the front sight is pretty bare. I'm somewhat disappointed with this. There's no serrations and there's no paint on it for reference points. It's a relatively tall blade, so it's easy to get lost on presentation because there's really nothing to see. Now, I am told that XS might be working on a fix for this, so stand by on that. If that comes to fruition, we will let you know. The second thing that I found on this gun, and I confirmed this by looking at some of the models at SHOT Show as well, this cut. Now, your mileage may vary, but this notch looks to me like it was cut out by an indentured Eastern European with hand tools. Now, to go right alongside that, Opening this firearm up, I find a fair amount of tooling marks that are just sort of left. Like there's a milling mark back here and there's a, there's some casting marks that are just kind of left out there in the open, particularly in the hidden regions of the firearm that if you were looking at uh, a mainstream brand, usually they just kind of polish those out. It's not that they don't use those processes. It's just that they spend a little bit more time refining it. That said, to balance everything that I just critiqued, what I would say is that I am told that this is supposed to have a street value of under six. So for a four inch revolver, it also uh, come in a six inch variant as well, but this is the four inch. Uh, for a full powered four inch revolver, yeah, I can't really argue. Thank you to all of you for tuning in, and special thanks to our Patreon and Subscribestar members who help keep the channel running. We also have opened a channel over at Utreon, so if that's something that you are starting to use, then check us out over there. The channel is basically being duplicated over there, and I plan to release uh, periodic early release content and special content over on Utreon, just because it's simply better than Patreon and subscribe star because it's a video sharing platform at its heart with all the functionality built into it.